Tattooed Luna by Mrs. Smith Chapter 3 I chose to ignore that comment. What can I do for you? Angela can be a hothead, but she is transferring too and I don't want there to be problems at school. I almost felt disappointed, almost. As long as she knows her place. If not, I'm sure she will find it soon enough. It wasn't a threat but a promise. Alex nodded his head in understanding. Why did your brother call you Ice? That name is reserved for close friends. That didn't answer my question. I'm not exactly the warm and fuzzy type. I kept it vague. Ice? I guess Ace was done waiting. Alex didn't bristle up, merely glanced over and studied his body language. Your boyfriend? No. See you tomorrow. I said before turning back around. Ace held the door open for me. Alex bike peeled out as Ace shut the door. What was that about? Colt asked, clearly unhappy. His BCH is transferring to and he doesn't want a scene. I shrugged. What did you tell him? Jacob asked in a not-so-friendly tone. As long as she knows her place, we are good. That I would hate to remind her of it. Hate, SHT. Ace shook his head in disbelief. Your reputation should be enough to keep her away. Emmy laughed. One little fight and I am the school bad girl. I sighed. It wasn't one fight and you put her into a coma. Colt smirked. BCH needed to know her place. I wasn't hungry but I didn't want to go home. Let's head out. Jacob drank the last of his soda. You girls need a ride? Colt offered. No, I want to walk home. It's getting dark out. Ace looked out the window. Thanks, Dad. I wasn't aware. Annoyed, I got up and started out the door. Emmy was quick to follow me. You know you will be in trouble if you are late. Emmy frowned. She was right, but I hated and I'll be in trouble even if I am early. I hear the boys' bikes come up behind us. Come on, sis. Get on. Colt held out a hand for me. Sighing, I gave in and got on. Emmy got on Ace's bike and we took off for the pack house. The ride only lasted five minutes and I was back to my hell. Colt dropped us off at the front and he went around to the garage. As soon as we walked in the front door, something moved from the side. Slap! The sting of a hand slapping across my face caused my head to whip to the right. I was caught so off guard that I staggered a little. Spid girl! How dare you disrespect me! Luna and shrieked. Pure hatred filled my eyes as I looked at her. I wasn't sure what came over me as I walked up to her and returned the slap. However, mine was more powerful and she fell to the floor crying. What is going in here? Dad roared. I knew I was in trouble but I didn't regret it. I literally walked in the door and she slapped me. I can't take this anymore, Dad. I am done being disrespected by someone who isn't even my mother. I hate it here. Come my birthday, I am gone and you won't ever see me again. So punish me as you want but I don't care anymore. The boys came in the room as I ranted. Tears ran down my face with the blood from the split lip she gave me. Not even waiting for a response, I ran up to my room, slamming the door shut. My body was buzzing and I needed to hit something. Thankfully, Colt installed a punching bag to help me focus my anger on it. My mind went black as I punched it over and over again. It wasn't until two massive arms wrapped around me and pinned me against him that I came back. My knuckles were bloody and my arms ached. Ice! Calm down! 
Colt had me tied against his chest. I'm so sorry, sis. My breathing leveled out and my eyesight focused. Jacob and Ace were here too. Emmy went home. Ace read my mind. Take a shower and go to bed. Colt said, letting me go. Ace came up and took my chin in his hand. He moved it to look at my lip. It's nothing. I said, jerking my head out of his hand. I convinced Dad to let you cool down. You need to see him in the morning. Okay. I was grateful for that. Thanks. The boys nodded as they left my room. My phone dinged. Not even looking at it, I tossed it on the bed and went to take a shower. The hot water burned against my knuckles but I welcomed the pain. The water eventually ran cold and I got out. Drying off and putting jammies on, I got into bed. My phone dinged again. This time, I looked at it. Emmy, you okay? Me, yeah, I'm okay. Emmy, don't believe you but we can talk tomorrow. Maybe Ace can ease your mind? Me, good night. She did get me to smile as I fell asleep instantly. The next morning, I woke up early to get ready. And slept in so I knew Dad would be alone in his office. Braiding my hair to the side, I applied a light layer of makeup to try to hide the light bruise on my chin. Finally, I put in flowy shorts with a black bodysuit. Grabbing a pair of sandals, I made my way to his office knock. 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 Come in Dad's voice boomed hi Dad. I said as I walked in and took a seat. Since it was just him and I, I didn't have to show all the respectful practices. Chris, what's going on? She makes my life a living hell. Just because I look like mom. All I did was walk in the door and she attacked me. I know I shouldn't have hit her but I'm done being a doormat for her abuse. My voice cracked but I held firm. Colt said you were leaving when you turned 18. Yes. I can't live with her anymore. You know you can't go around and hit an. Dad started. For once, can you just be my dad? Actually hear me and listen to me? I interrupted. Chris, you know I love you. Standing up, Alpha, can you please just give me my punishment and let me get to school? If he wasn't going to be the dad I needed, I wasn't going to address him as such. Don't do that. He shook his head in disappointment. A knock saved me from answering. The door opened without Dad answering. It was Beta Andrew. Sorry, I can come back. I need to get to school. I said looking at Dad. We aren't done talking. He said as I turned to leave. Yes, sir. Rushing out of the office, I went straight to the garage. Getting on my bike, I took off. Not waiting for anyone else. I felt free with the wind in my hair. In my haste to leave, I forgot my helmet. Not like I don't heal quickly. My knuckles were scabbed over but still looked angry. Since I left so early, there weren't many cars in the school parking lot. Parking my bike, I got off and went to the picnic table and sat down. Plugging my earphones in, I blasted some old rock songs and got lost in my drawings. Since I was a tattoo artist, I liked to have a bunch of my own work available for people to chose from. This one was of a phoenix. The wings were spread wide with fire around him. I was so lost in the shadowing that I didn't see or feel Ace approaching. S.H.T. I yelled as he tapped my shoulder, causing me to jump. He sat down across from me. I saw his eyes examine my lip and my knuckles. It made me slightly uncomfortable but loved as well. You okay? Always am. 
I said as I out my music away. Kristen. Anytime someone uses my full name, I know they are serious. Setting my pencil down, I looked at him in the eyes. What do you want me to say? I'm lovely? Couldn't be better? I'm flat out miserable? Is it too much to ask to ask for a dad who will take my side for once? I was starting to get worked up again. Ace reached over and took my hand. It's okay. I wish I could take your pain away. It sounded so intimate. Seven more years till Colt takes over. I sighed, steering the conversation away from us. Your birthday is coming up. What if your mate is in this pack? We had talked about us being mates, but it didn't feel right. School will be over in a few months. Maybe he will want a vacation. What if he can't take one? He was talking about himself and he was right. Once Colt turned 18, his alpha training would soar and I'd barely see him. That meant Jacob and Ace too. I'll send postcards. I hadn't realized the schoolyard was filling up. The first bell rang, telling us we had five minutes before class started. Ace frowned as we stood up and made our way in. I felt eyes on me, as I looked back and saw Alec looking at me. Angelo was clinging to him. I wanted to punch her in the face but instead, I turned around and went to class. The morning went by slowly. The teacher's lectures were boring. I'm in all the advanced classes so I really needed to pay attention but I couldn't. My last class, Advanced Calculus, was all I had left before lunch. The door opened and Alec walked in with another guy I didn't recognize. Alec looked around and saw me before taking a seat on the other side of the room. His sexy friend sat beside him. I sat towards the back as I had a hard time focusing in the front. It bothered me not knowing what was happening behind me so I would sit in the back. Occasionally, I would feel his eyes in me but I tried to focus. The teacher was going over last semester's progress so I pulled out my sketch pad and kept working on the phoenix. Most people didn't know my IQ was that of a genius. Three years ago, I tested out of high school but I didn't want to be a freak so I chose to stay and go year by year. All the teachers knew that so they didn't call on me and didn't worry when I skipped class. Not to mention they were all wolves and knew who I was. Dad and the other alphas commanded them to not tell a soul about my IQ. It wasn't something I wanted to share. When the bell finally rang, the teacher called on me. Miss Chris. Can you come see me for a second? Everyone but Alec and his friend left. Hello, Miss Simpson. I am Alec and this is Jasper. I wanted to introduce myself to you. That's right. Alpha Mark's son? She looked at him yes, ma'am nice to meet you. I will say that being the Alpha's son doesn't excuse missed homework. She glared at him. I stood awkwardly off to the side. Understood. He was clearly annoyed but didn't push it. Miss Chris. Can I count of you again this year? I had to smirk, yes, ma'am. Looking forward to it. Perfect. I'll send you an email with details. Sounds good. I said and left. Wait. Alec jogged to catch up with me. Chris. This is Jasper. He will be my beta. Jasper, this is Alpha Brian's daughter. Nice to meet you. He said politely. I raised my eyebrow at his level of professionalism. You too. If you would excuse me. I turned to leave. My stomach was rumbling. Still in for this afternoon? Alec called out. Yes, sir, I said without looking back. I knew they were following me, but I didn't care. I wanted food. Mm -hmm.